Hello and welcome everyone. Tonight we're going to review the Joe Brum's version of the Hossam Dionaldo Karambit. We'll go over its features, we'll go over its uh, specs and dimension, and some of the purpose of the features that are included in the, in the Joe Brum Hossam Dionaldo Karambit. Okay? So, first well, let's see if we can give everybody a nice view of the blade in relation to being in the hand right right there the blade is double edged it has a true sharp edge on the top blade which uh, for tonight's discussion we'll say that that is the secondary edge and the primary edge is also very sharp and has that special feature right there called the penetrator the Krambit has a G10 handle that is three-dimensional it gives you a wider portion by the palm swell and a little thinner towards the index and the and the ring and again thins out slightly towards the end by the base of the blade the blade is the handle and the blade is well polished and it's very uh, very well made you will see that there's some notching there by by the thumb ramp on the base of the blade but there's also uh, checkering on those on on the area on those two areas over there and that goes the same way for the notching on the back part by the ring and again there are some uh, some notching uh, rather checkering there. It has a red spacer inside, right, right through there, and in fact it gives it uh, a nice profile between the stainless, the black G10, and then the red, red spacer over there. Feels very comfortable in the hand, very solid. It's not going to turn on you. When you when it does come in contact or gum, comes against some resistance, when uh, when applied in a tactical or personal defense scenario, that's not going to slip out of your hand. Right? It's uh, it's got uh, very good retention and control, and you'll be able to uh, manipulate that very well. This is uh, made by Joe Brum, like I said, and Joe Brum is the only authorized uh, uh, creator, or rather maker, for this blade right now. That uh, Jerry Hossam and uh, Ray Dionaldo had approved. And Jerry had no longer makes this blade and it is only Joe now that he has entrusted for him to be able to make um, this blade so after many moons uh, again the this karambit lives and in fact uh, Jerry had nicknamed this uh, this karambit as instead of being a karambit he actually uh, named this the uh, karambitch because uh, as he described it, it was uh, very very difficult to, uh, to make and um, not only uh, did was it difficult, he also had to donate some uh, some DNA in order for him to be able to curve out or ground out uh, the these edges. The other feature that I want to talk about regarding this uh, karambit is this end and that end. 
where that particular top end is not only for resting your thumb when you are in a forward grip like so but that's also great for for catching so if we were to yeah, meet side to side and that works into a trap temporarily trap tug and then deploy that's for the top part for the ring part that can be for either trapping the small digits right so that you can peel that off or you can have some control there or even a impact part for if you do not want to use the business end of the karambit the um, the third feature that this uh, this particular end of this karambit can be used for is uh, can be used for as used for as a uh, flipper so in we are aware that you can hold the karambit in this position you can hold the karambit in that position right and uh, you can also use that as a flipper to to a carry come for a come along like so okay so you flip that back or flip that over uh, there are certain applications of that in a uh, in a fight scenario that you might be able to use. It's not something that uh, everybody uses, but it is there for a reason. Uh, these features that Joe had put in the holes are great for. Um, or being able to retain the blade when switching from forward grip right forward grip access the that switch and go into reverse grip okay there 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 it's very light um, it's a 154 CPM 154 not to be confused with uh, 154 CM there's a difference between the two blades but from what I've read uh, CPM 154 has uh, has a good edge retention fairly tough allows for the knife maker to be able to make these difficult grinds because of uh, its special properties this particular blade is about um, six and a half inches uh, in length okay six and three quarters the ring is about uh, an inch the blade is from from tip to base is about four and three quarters inch long the handle from the base to the base of the ring is about three and a half three and a half inch long but for um, for the total length from one one edge to the other that is a mere six and three quarters to seven inches total so it's a it's a unique blade it's not it's not for everyone but for those who practice uh, blade arts it is a it is a favorite because of the effectiveness of the blade for not just for cutting but also for manipulation and for trapping so it is uh, worth every penny if you look into this blade or if you're looking to uh, in the market of purchasing a blade I highly recommend it so um, give me shoot me an email or send me a message if you are wondering if uh, there's any other features that I was not able to discuss with this particular blade but um, 
something that I write, would recommend highly. And uh, it's a it's a it's a beautiful blade. Very effective, very functional. Uh, it's got that deep curve. A lot some of the karambits nowadays you'll see it fairly straight, which not, doesn't distinguish it a whole lot from uh, from a regular straight knife. So. Um, it is uh, unique and I don't know how long uh, Joe Brum intends to continue to make this but uh, while he is making it do take advantage because it's uh, it's a work of art uh, and it is uh, a functional work of art the way I look at it so I hope uh, that you had been able to gain some knowledge and insight into this uh, into this blade and if there's anything else that uh, I can be of assistance, please don't hesitate to uh, shoot me an email or shoot me a message. And uh, I'll hope to talk to you later. Everybody have a nice day.